Since 1995, Japanese gamers have immersed themselves in the mysterious dungeons of the Shirin the Wanderer series. This February, Atlas is proud to bring that experience stateside in Shirin's most definitive adventure yet, aptly titled Shirin the Wanderer. I'm Scott Strickhart, the project lead, and I'm here to introduce you to this world. Shirin's journey begins when his uncle and his master, Sensei, hands him the key to the fabled Karakuri Mansion. Joined by his loudmouthed ferret companion, Kopa, and the Lady Wanderer, Asuka, the four of them set out to brave the dangers in search of treasure beyond their wildest imaginations. What they get, though, is the tale of a sleeping princess that spans 1,000 years as Shirin's own past becomes intertwined with the mythology of the ancient mansion. As Shirin, you'll be exploring over 40 hours worth of randomly generated dungeons as you engage your foes in a strategic form of turn-based combat. Each step or action you take is considered a turn, which then gives each foe in the dungeons a turn in response. You'll have to consider each move as you fight to position yourself to your advantage in a chess-like game of minds. Sound hard? Well, Shirin's name is derived from the Japanese word meaning trial or ordeal. Traditionally, the series has been known for its scathing difficulty, often putting players on the fast track to game over. In previous iterations, death in a dungeon would set you back to level 1 with an empty inventory. But that isn't the case in this title. As the most accessible of his adventures to date, at the beginning of the game, players can select between a normal and an easy mode to suit their style of play. On easy, a game over will revert you to your state from a previous save. You'll have all the items you entered the dungeon with and be ready to tackle it again with the strategies your last untimely death taught you. Normal is a more traditional experience for veterans of the genre. On game over, you'll find yourself having lost your entire inventory, forced to scrape your storage and perhaps even an earlier dungeon to replenish your stock. You'll note, though, that both modes allow you to keep the hard-earned levels you gained up to your last save. But with up to three completely customizable characters, your chances of survival have never been greater. You can switch the character you're controlling with the press of a button, and set the allies you aren't using to specific behaviors. Ally characters can be made to seek and destroy all foes, follow you from one square behind, or make finding items their priority. And as for those items, you can even determine which ones you'd like your allies to be capable of using with detailed checklists you can toggle on or off from the menu. Of course, for a boss fight, and to get the ultimate tactical advantage, you can turn on the full control mode, allowing you to take each of your character's turns one at a time. Like any good RPG, Shirin can take advantage of a number of services available to him in town. He can store items and money to prevent them from being lost in the dungeon, upgrade and customize weapons and equipment, or even take on side quests from townsfolk that will hopefully be worth the reward. This time around, Otsutsuki Village serves as Shirin's base of operations, but a vendor is available to him on each map he visits. As you can see, Shirin's most recent outing is one of his most vibrant and colorful adventures yet, with a hand-drawn world map, cutscenes that highlight the game's key moments, and a plethora of dungeons that are anything but gravel-brown saturations. If you enjoy traditional RPGs, Shirin's story won't disappoint either, as its Japanese influences offer a world full of plot twists, figures straight out of the ancient mythology, and some in-game challenges that will make true fans of the series pretty happy. I hope you've enjoyed this quick look at Shirin the Wanderer, and that you're looking forward to its release as much as we are. Thank you very much for watching.